Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Someday I will definitely be lucky. Someday I will live differently and won't count these pennies. I will have a big house, a loving husband, and three children. Soledad looked out the bus window and repeated these words like a mantra every morning on her way to work. The girl worked as a cashier at a bank, regularly counting other people's money while having almost none of her own. She was responsible for taking care of her sick aunt, to whom Soledad owed her life. Soledad's mother died in an accident when she was four years old. She never knew her father, and besides her Aunt Sierra, her mother's sister, she had no other relatives. Her aunt gave up her personal life and dedicated herself entirely to her niece. Since Aunt Sierra had no children of her own, they were the closest and dearest people to each other. However, a year ago, Aunt Sierra fell seriously ill. Despite being relatively young at 49, she had to quit her job and focus on her health, or rather, the fight against her illness. Soledad, who had just turned 25 a week ago, took it upon herself to do everything she could to help her aunt. She took her to doctors, bought expensive medications, and hoped that her beloved aunt would recover soon. But there was no miracle, and with each passing month, Aunt Sierra's condition worsened. Desperate to find help from conventional doctors, Soledad decided to try her luck with traditional healers. Aunt Sierra strongly opposed such experiments, but her niece didn't listen and sought help from various so-called healers and alternative medicine practitioners. Today, after work, Soledad planned to visit another old woman who assured her over the phone that Aunt Sierra's presence was not necessary, her photograph would suffice. Soledad understood that the chances of finding a real healer who could help were slim, but she still hoped and continued to visit different so-called healers. And for some reason, today Soledad had a feeling that her luck would change. Or maybe she just wished it, desperately wanting to help her aunt overcome her illness faster. After finishing her workday, Soledad boarded the bus and headed to the given address. She was in a very good mood, and her intuition was strong. The journey was long as the healer was located at the outskirts of the city. It was a residential area, and Soledad had to walk for another 30 minutes from the bus stop to reach the specific house. Approaching the fence, Soledad noticed that the house was quite old. It didn't look like the dwelling of someone who deceived people. They usually had tents instead of houses. Soledad hesitantly opened the gate and walked along the path towards the house. Two women were sitting on a bench near it. Excuse me, does Grandma Sella live here? Soledad asked. Good day. Yes, she lives here, the older woman replied. Good day, are you here to see her too? Soledad asked. Yes, the woman scanned Soledad from head to toe. And why are you here? You are so young. Perhaps you want to lure a man away from his family? Well, you're at the wrong place. Grandma Sella doesn't engage in such activities. She helps people. She heals. Mom, why are you attacking the girl? The younger woman who was sitting next to the older woman said, Do young people never get sick? I'm sick, you know. Soledad felt a bit uncomfortable that they had misunderstood her intentions, so she hurriedly explained. No, not at all. I need help to cure my aunt. She's very ill, and no one can help her. That's why I hope that Grandma Asella can help or advise something. Oh, then you've come to the right place. She will definitely help. Look, my daughter couldn't walk for half a year. And now, you see, she walks with a cane, but on her own two feet. Only now did Soledad notice that the girl had a crutch next to her and one of her legs was unnaturally turned to the side. At that moment, another woman came out of the house with tears in her eyes and said that the next person could come in. The woman and her daughter entered the house and Soledad hurried to comfort the weeping woman. Are you feeling very bad? Don't be sad. I have been seeking help for six months, but I haven't lost hope. You should believe too. The woman looked at Soledad in surprise. Why did you assume I was crying out of sorrow? On the contrary, I had cancer, and now it's gone. I came to thank Grandma Asella for the miraculous healing because it can only be described as a miracle. 
Doctors said I had no chance and only had about three months to live. But I've been living for one and a half years already. Last week, I took all the tests and did an MRI, and there are no more tumors. They still can't believe it or understand how it's possible. That's why I came to say thank you to Grandma Sella. That's an amazing story. Maybe she can help me too then? How much money do I need to pay? Everyone has different rates. She doesn't take money, only food and whatever people bring. Oh, I don't have anything. I didn't know. I only have a chocolate bar, here. Soledad took out a 200 gram chocolate bar from her bag and showed it to them. This will do. Grandma Sella loves chocolate. She says it helps her work. So you're lucky. But next time, if you come, bring sausages, cheese, vegetables, fruits, or anything you don't mind and can bring. I understand. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your recovery. Thank you. Let your person also recover, the one you came here for. Soledad waited for almost an hour until the woman and her daughter came out of the house. They were both smiling, and Soledad's hope grew with each passing minute. Come in, don't be afraid, the mother of the girl said. It's your turn. Soledad stepped onto the porch and paused in front of the door. She felt scared. What if Grandma Sella couldn't help? What if her aunt's illness was incurable? But she had to enter the house, otherwise she would never know the truth. Soledad confidently opened the door. In the center of the room, sitting at a table, was an old lady, at least 80 years old. There was a chair and a stool next to her, and there were papers, books, icons, candles, and one large candle burning in a glass on the table. May I come in? Soledad asked. Of course, come in, don't be afraid, my dear. Grandma Sella said in a gentle voice. Sit on the chair and tell me how you arrived at my house. Soledad was very surprised by such a question. What difference did it make how she arrived? She didn't come here for that. But she obediently sat on the chair and started to tell her story. Grandma Sella took her hand and held it, asking some silly questions. She asked Soledad about her job, whether she liked it, and similar things. Soledad looked at Grandma Sella in bewilderment and didn't understand anything. This went on for about 10 minutes. Then Grandma Sella took an icon and said, now sit quietly. She stood up and approached Soledad from behind. She quietly recited a prayer with her lips, which Soledad couldn't see, only hearing some indistinct sounds and whispers. Grandma Sella returned to her place. I will help your aunt, but she must do everything I say, Grandma Sella said. Soledad looked at her in astonishment. How do you know that it's my aunt who needs help? And don't you need a photograph? No. Why? You don't have any other living relatives, and I gathered all the information from you. You do have a father, of course, but I can hardly call him a father. Just a name. Yes, you've never seen him. Soledad shivered. She had been to all these healers, but nothing like this had ever happened. She was curious about what else this miraculous old lady could tell her. Can you tell me something else about me? Something that nobody knows? Do you want to test me, or are you just very curious? I'm just very surprised by you, and I'm curious. You have a scar on your left thigh. You fell from an apple tree when you were six years old. Although your aunt strictly forbade you to climb it. And you didn't tell her about your fall until pus started coming out of the wound. Wow! Soledad exclaimed. You even mentioned the tree. The girl was deeply impressed. And now, whatever Grandma Sella said, Soledad would perceive it as the ultimate truth. She would make her aunt do whatever the old lady told her to do. Grandma Sella smiled, apparently not the first time she had received such a reaction to her words. Now listen carefully, my dear. If you do as I say, in just six months, your aunt will be able to forget about her illness forever. She explained in detail what needed to be done. She gave a bottle of tincture that had to be taken strictly at certain times and in specific quantities. 
It's crucial to follow the proportions and keep track of the time. Do everything by the hour, and after a month, you'll come to me with her. Exactly one month. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Soledad reached into her bag for the chocolate bar and hesitantly placed it on the table. Here, please take it. I was advised not to give you money, and I have nothing else, I'm sorry. Chocolate is my weakness and the best remedy for melancholy, remember that. You don't need anything else, don't make up anything. Via con Dios. And I'll be waiting for you exactly a month from now. Yes, yes. I understand. But most importantly, no matter what tries to interfere, you must come without fail. What could possibly interfere with us? Is there anything more important than health? Oh, there can be, definitely. Your aunt's illness is not simple. Such diseases don't just happen. And the one who caused IT to happen won't want your aunt to recover. Soledad looked at the old lady with surprise and confusion. She truly didn't understand what was so special about her aunt's illness. And who could be preventing her aunt from getting better? All right, I understand everything now. Goodbye and thank you very much again. Soledad left the house and slowly walked to the bus stop. She was amazed by that old lady. But what surprised her the most was that her voice didn't sound old at all. It was so young, as if Soledad was talking to someone her own age. She couldn't understand how that could be, but she didn't dare to ask. Soledad arrived home around 9 o'clock in the evening. Aunt Sierra was sitting near the window in her room, looking at the illuminated courtyard. She couldn't read because she could hardly see anything up close. For the same reason, she didn't watch television. Sometimes she listened to music, but more often audiobooks. Soledad, you're back. How are you doing? I'll tell you something right now. You won't believe it. Soledad began her story from the doorstep. I met such an amazing woman today. Again? Did you go to another pseudo-healer? No, Aunt Sierra, she's a real healer. I've never met anyone like her before. I'll tell you everything now, and you'll understand for yourself. Soledad detailed her encounter with the woman and her daughter. Aunt Sierra skeptically listened to the story. They deliberately do that to make an impression on those who come for the first time. It's a well-known practice. All right, all right. Just keep listening. But when Soledad finished her story, her aunt genuinely looked at her with surprise. Well, what do you think, Mrs. Skeptic? What do you have to say now? Aunt Sierra was clearly shocked. She couldn't believe what she had just heard. Yes, she was a skeptic and was used to everything having a logical explanation. But how could that old lady know that her niece fell from an apple tree 19 years ago, not from any other tree? And it wasn't easy to guess that Soledad had no one else but her. Aunt Sierra looked at her niece attentively and skeptically. Tell me, did you make all this up just to make me believe and start doing what she said? Are you serious? Soledad was genuinely surprised. Do you really think I'm capable of joking about such things and experimenting with your health by giving you some mysterious tincture without trusting that old lady? Don't be offended. It just all seems a bit too unbelievable. For your information, I was as surprised as you. But to suspect me of dishonesty? I didn't expect that from you. Soledad was hurt. Anyway, tell me, are you going to do what she said or not? Soledad asked sternly. I won't be able to control you while I'm at work. Let's give it a try. After all, I have nothing to lose, and what she said to do seems quite manageable. That's great. For a whole month, Aunt Sierra drank the tincture from Grandma Acela at specific times, recited prayers at designated times, did special exercises, and self-massage. Tomorrow would mark exactly one month since Soledad went to the healer, and they needed to go to her together. Soledad made arrangements with an acquaintance to drive them there since Aunt Sierra wouldn't be able to manage that route on public transportation and then walk on her own. In the morning, Osvaldo called the man who was supposed to drive them and said that the car wouldn't start. He apologized several times, but said he couldn't help. 
Soledad was stunned. How could that be? She didn't immediately recall Acela's words about someone trying to prevent them from seeing her again. Soledad called a taxi, and the car was supposed to arrive in 10 minutes. She helped her aunt get ready, and they left the apartment. But then another unexpected thing happened. The women got stuck in the elevator. And now Soledad remembered what Acela had told her and mentioned it to her aunt. However, her aunt, of course, didn't believe it and said it was just a coincidence. But when they finally managed to get out of the elevator and got into the taxi, only for it to break down after 500 meters, even Aunt Sierra became concerned. What's happening? She asked herself out loud. As if it's someone's wicked joke. I told you, but you don't want to listen to me. You don't believe in any of this, said Soledad. Ladies, I apologize, but I can't continue driving you. I've arranged for another car to pick you up. I'm sorry for the technical issues with the vehicle. While they were waiting for the other car, Soledad silently prayed. She didn't even know why she suddenly decided to do it, and she didn't know many prayers either. But intuitively, she felt that she needed to do it this way. The second car took them to a cello without any incidents, and Soledad let out a sigh of relief when she saw the old house. They got out of the car and entered the courtyard. Asilo was sitting on a bench near the house. Good day, ladies. You finally made it. She said as if she knew what had happened to them. Hello. Yes, you were right. It wasn't without adventure, Soledad replied. But the most important thing is that you made it to my house. Do you know why? She asked Soledad. No. Timely prayer works wonders, Acela replied and gestured for the women to enter the house. Amazed, Soledad silently looked at her aunt, who didn't understand anything at all, and obediently followed, holding her aunt's hand. This time Aunt Sierra sat on the chair, and Soledad was instructed to take a stool and sit further away, which she did. Acela took a candle in her hands and started walking around Aunt Sierra. She whispered something placed her right hand on different parts of her aunt's body, and then asked her to tightly close her eyes. Keep them closed until I tell you to open them. Close them tightly, she said. Aunt Sierra did everything she was told. With her eyes closed, she sat like that for about ten minutes. Then Asilla approached her, stood in front of her, and leaned closer to her face. Open them. She ordered loudly and menacingly. Aunt Sierra abruptly opened her eyes. At first, everything was blurry and moving, but then it started to clear up, and suddenly she saw the face of the woman in front of her clearly. At some point, she thought it was just a vision from her memory. But then a newspaper appeared before her eyes, and Grandma Acela said, Read. Aunt Sierra started reading the text of an article, and suddenly tears streamed from her eyes, she could see. Soledad, sitting aside and observing, almost fell off her chair. Something incredible happened before her eyes. A real miracle. Acela moved away from Aunt Sierra and sat back in her chair. You still don't believe me? She asked her aunt and smiled again, just as she did when Soledad asked her to tell something about her life. And suddenly, Aunt Sierra fell to her knees before the woman and began to apologize. Forgive me, for God's sake. I really didn't believe. All this month, I laughed to myself and thought you were fooling us. I'm sorry. And thank you so much. All right, stop all this and sit back in your place. We haven't defeated your illness yet, and we must do that. Yes, yes. As you say. She nimbly sat back on the chair and attentively watched the old woman as if she were an almighty person. Now, I'm going to tell you, and you listen carefully and remember, it's very important. She explained the treatment plan for the next month and said that they would need to come to her again afterwards. I think next time you can come to me without Soledad. And then, you must go to the sea, at least for a couple of weeks. We can't afford that, it's very expensive. Firstly, I didn't say you need to go to the sea right away tomorrow. Secondly, if I say you need to go to the sea, it means you will be able to afford it. 
Very soon, she looked attentively at Soledad. Someone's life will take a major turn, and they will be able to afford many things. Soledad once again looked astonished at Acela. What kind of major turn should happen for them to be able to easily and carelessly go to the sea? But she listened attentively, understanding that this elderly woman didn't say things without reason. And what do I need to do for that? Soledad finally asked. Be attentive not only to your aunt, but also to strangers. Well, I think I'm already attentive to others. You need to be even more attentive and look around. Perhaps someone very close to you needs your help, and you don't notice it. When you return home, look around. Soledad didn't expect such a mysterious answer. She thought the old woman would directly tell her where to go or what to do. But instead, she received vague formulations. During the entire journey back, Soledad remained silent. She tried to understand the meaning of the prediction, but couldn't figure it out. Nobody she knew well needed urgent help. Maybe I'm looking in the wrong places. Maybe someone at work needs help. But how can I help? I have no money or connections. These questions troubled Soledad. She even discussed them with her aunt, but they couldn't find any answers. Soledad, don't worry. If something is meant to happen, it will happen. She confidently said that we will be able to go to the sea. So, you won't miss the person you need to help. Just be patient. You're right. I'll now keep an eye out for everything. Neither Soledad nor her aunt even remembered the elderly woman who lived right below them on the fourth floor. She was a lonely old lady with no one else. They often saw her near the entrance, and sometimes she asked Soledad for help with carrying bags or running errands. Soledad couldn't even imagine that the person who would change her life in the near future was living right below them. But that would happen a little later. In the morning, Soledad went to work, leaving her aunt alone at home. Around 10 o'clock, the doorbell rang. Aunt Sierra slowly approached the door. Who could it be? She wondered. Visitors were extremely rare, and even then, they usually called in advance. Aunt Sierra opened the door, and their downstairs neighbor was standing on the threshold. Hello, dear Sierra. Sorry to bother you, but is Soledad home? Hello, Mercedes. No, Soledad is at work. What happened? Well, I wanted to ask her to help me clean the windows. I'm afraid of heights, you know. The fourth floor, God forbid, my head spins and I might fall. Oh, you don't have to do it yourself. Soledad will help, don't worry. She has a day off tomorrow, she will definitely come to you. Thank you so much. May God bless you. How are you feeling? Thank you, better. Soledad did her best. And Aunt Sierra, not knowing why, told the neighbor about Acela, the old woman. Soledad is truly amazing. To be honest, I haven't encountered real healers often in my life. You're lucky. I hope she will help you, and you will recover soon. You're a good person, Sierra. You deserve this victory over your illness. You know, I never believed in them. I'm skeptical about this. But my skepticism disappeared completely here. This woman is truly amazing. She says things that nobody could have known. It's impossible to guess or make up such things. How does she do it? It's incomprehensible. But it's impressive. You know, in my youth, I once met such a woman by chance. She predicted my fate. But of course, I didn't believe her. I was 20 at the time, and it seemed impossible. But, Sierra, everything she said came true. If I had known it was true back then, I would have thought a hundred times before doing what I did. They had already moved to the kitchen and were drinking coffee. Apparently, the neighbor wanted to talk, and Aunt Sierra didn't interrupt her. Sometimes, it's important to just listen to someone, it makes them feel better. Besides, Aunt Sierra had nowhere to rush. But you didn't do anything like that, did you? Aunt Sierra asked with interest. You're such a kind woman. I don't think you're capable of doing anything bad. Oh, I'm so kind now. 
but in my youth, I wasn't a very pleasant person. Really? I would have never thought, Aunt Sierra said, surprised. Aunt Sierra continued to listen attentively as the neighbor shared her story. The neighbor talked about the biggest mistake she made and regretted every day of her life, terminating a pregnancy. If I could go back, I wouldn't have done it, she said. Yes, it's hard. But there must have been no other way for you. There's always another way. I didn't have to do it, but I loved someone so much that I was willing to do anything for them. Even something like that. Did he not want children, or did he have another family? Neither. He had serious problems at that time, and a child was the last thing he needed. He asked me to have an abortion, saying that we could have children later. But later never came. Back then, abortions were performed in a way that greatly reduced the chances of getting pregnant in the future. And I had to do it secretly, those were the times, the neighbor sighed heavily. It was clear that she needed to talk, and this conversation felt like a confession. Aunt Sierra listened silently, without interrupting. She wanted to ask questions, but she held her tongue. She knew how to listen. What happened next? Did you stay with him? Aunt Sierra finally gathered the courage to ask. It's hard to say. Yes and no. He was arrested. He was a very handsome and prominent man. In the prison camp, he caught the attention of the head of the medical unit, and she promised him freedom if he would be with her. He agreed. Prison is the kind of place where any opportunity to escape is seen as a gift. And he decided to take advantage of it. I don't judge him. I would have probably done the same. And you never saw him again? Why would you think that? I saw him multiple times. He was released on health grounds. I don't know what diagnosis they attributed to him, but he was released from custody. We met again a month later. He came to see me himself. I was so happy. But it didn't last. We spent two days together, and then he returned to her, to his wife. What a nightmare. I sympathize. It must have been tough. Couldn't he leave her? He couldn't. He was an honorable man and said he was grateful to her. That he couldn't do such a thing. He raised her son as his own. When they got married, the boy was two years old. He considered Pedro his father. Pedro was your beloved? Yes, he was eight years older than me. He's the only man in my life whom I loved and still love to this day. She turned away because tears welled up in her eyes. Is he no longer alive? Aunt Sierra guessed. He passed away seven years ago, on the day of my birthday. Can you imagine the irony? That's terrible, Aunt Sierra sympathetically shook her head. Yes, ever since then, I don't celebrate my birthday. And there's no one to celebrate it with anyway. I don't like holidays in general. Even on Christmas Eve, I go to bed early to avoid seeing others having fun. Aunt Sierra suddenly felt genuinely sorry for this unfortunate woman. If Soledad and I had known that you have no one, we would have invited you to celebrate holidays with us. It's strange how things turn out. You live with someone in the same house for so many years and know nothing about them. Well, that's the way it is, Sierra. These times, unfortunately, no one cares about anyone. Aunt Sierra felt awkward because, in essence, the neighbor was right. What do they know about their neighbors or the neighbors about them? Nothing. The neighbors on the same floor know a little, and that's it. Everyone lives as recluses. But it used to be different. Neighbors would visit each other, celebrate holidays together, and help each other with child care. Everything has changed so much in the last 20 years. You're right. People nowadays live side by side for years and know nothing about each other. It's sad, isn't it? Let's try to change that. I'm not against it. After all, I don't even have anyone to talk to. I had a friend who lived on the first floor, but she passed away six months ago. Maybe you remember her, Rosa from apartment 38? Oh, she passed away? Sierra was surprised. Well, it's not surprising that I didn't know. Well, you're forgiven. You had other things on your mind. Mercedes stood up. 
I'll go, Sierra, you need to rest. I'll be waiting for Soledad tomorrow for her help. Yes, she'll definitely come, don't worry. And thank you for your honesty, it was nice talking to you. Another time, I'll share my story with you. Agreed. If you can move around on your own, come by, I'll be glad to see you. I'll definitely drop by. In the evening, when Soledad came home from work, Aunt Sierra told her about the elderly neighbor. You'll help her, won't you? I already promised her. Of course, I'll help. It's not a problem for me. The next morning after breakfast, Soledad went to the neighbor's apartment. Hello, did you call for a helper? Soledad smiled warmly, but when she saw the expression on Mercedes' face, she got worried. Oh, is everything okay with you? Yes, I seem to be feeling unwell. I've been feeling bad since morning, the neighbor barely audible replied. Have you checked your temperature? No. My thermometer broke, and I haven't had the chance to buy a new one. I see. Soledad swiftly took the neighbor's arm and led her to the room. You lie down. I'll quickly run home to get a thermometer and come back. I hope you have a blood pressure monitor. Yes, Mercedes smiled. At my age, it's an essential item in the home first aid kit. Good, I'll be back quickly, Soledad said and ran home. Returning in five minutes, Soledad found that the neighbor was doing something in the bathroom. Why did you get up? I told you not to. Soledad exclaimed in protest. I needed to prepare everything for cleaning the windows. The old lady tried to justify herself. Do you think I can't pour water into the bucket myself? Especially since I brought my own supplies. Soledad pointed with her hand to the bucket, cleaning solutions, and rags she had brought. Immediately returned to bed. We will deal with your temperature and blood pressure now. Mercedes obediently went back to the room. Her blood pressure turned out to be normal, 140 over 85. This is my normal blood pressure, everything is fine. But the temperature was not good, the thermometer showed 38.7 degrees. How did you manage to catch a cold? Soledad was surprised. Should we call a doctor or can we handle it ourselves? Let's try it ourselves. I don't like those doctors. Agreed. Just promise me that you'll listen to me and not try to do anything heroic with a cloth in your hand. Okay? Okay, the neighbor obediently agreed. Soledad brought a cup of tea with honey to Mercedes and gave her a fever-reducing tablet. You need to rest, and in the meantime, I'll do the cleaning. I'll be as quiet as possible so as not to disturb you. Soledad washed all the windows in the two-bedroom apartment, dusted, and cleaned the floor. Mercedes silently watched Soledad. She clearly had no intention of sleeping or interfering. The girl skillfully and confidently wielded the cloth. After two hours, the apartment was perfectly tidy. You're so nimble and capable. Sierra is lucky to have a niece like you. Thank you, Soledad. Well then, I'll quickly run to the store and make some food for you. I think I had soup in the fridge. Just soup? Soledad was surprised. I'm not good at cooking, to be honest. It's easier for me to buy something than to cook. That's not good at all. I'll cook for you. Well, not exactly. I'll cook at home and bring it to you. You can't rely on fast food. Well, occasionally it's fine as an exception, but not all the time. Soledad, I'm so ashamed. I don't want to cause you any trouble or impose myself. Soledad didn't let the old lady finish. Stop talking nonsense. You're not imposing yourself at all. I'm just helping you like a neighbor, like a human being. I've never had a grandmother, and it's really not difficult for me. So let's not bring up this topic again. Instead, tell me what you'd like to eat. The neighbor lowered her gaze, clearly feeling embarrassed. Go ahead, speak up, don't be shy. If I ask, it means I can cook it. Besides, I have the day off today, and I'll be cooking meals for my aunt anyway. And who knows, maybe I'll like your idea better, 
and I'll cook exactly that, Soledad smiled. I really want chicken soup, homemade, the real deal. Is that all? That won't do. Chicken soup is not a problem at all. So, since you're feeling shy, I'll suggest my menu, and you can tell me what you like and what you don't. Everyone has different tastes. She took out her phone and prepared to write down the menu. So, chicken soup, meatballs, mashed potatoes, liver pate, and homemade filled cookies. The grandmother looked at her young neighbor with genuine curiosity. Are you going to cook all of that today? Of course, I have to go to work tomorrow. Is there something wrong with that? Soledad didn't quite understand. I would take three whole days to cook such a menu, if not more, Mercedes smiled. I'm not even sure if I could handle it. I definitely can't cook like that. What can you do? Soledad asked. I know how to sew and knit, and I enjoy it. But cooking is something I never learned. By the way, would you like me to knit you a sweater or a scarf once I feel better? I would be very grateful. On the contrary, I don't enjoy sewing or knitting. I lack patience. But I do enjoy cooking. And I especially love baking, but that requires more time. Next week, I have two consecutive days off, and I'll bake my special cake and invite you over for tea. I'll look forward to it. I also love homemade baked goods. Store-bought cakes are not as delicious and lack that homemade touch. Well, rest up, and I'll go and cook. I'll be back in about three hours, and you really need to get some sleep. Here, I wrote down my mobile number for you. If anything comes up, don't hesitate to call. Soledad handed her a piece of paper and placed it on the bedside table. Thank you, dear. You helped me and surprised me today. How did I surprise you? Soledad didn't understand. With your kindness and humanity. The youth nowadays are so indifferent, but you're different. Thank you, blushing, Soledad smiled and added, Well, I'm off now. I'll be back soon. Get well. Soledad returned closer to the evening with a bag full of different food containers. Mercedes, the old lady, stood up to greet her neighbor. Oh, why did you get up? I'll feed you now, and the rest I'll put in the fridge. Let's have a bit of soup now, and the meatballs and mashed potatoes can be for tomorrow. Everything smells so delicious, I even have an appetite now. I'll have a little soup and a slice of bread with the pate, is that okay? Of course, you have a great appetite for a sick person. Over the course of a few days, Soledad managed to get the elderly neighbor back on her feet. Every morning before work, she would visit her, and after work, she would come to check on her and bring food. They started to communicate more. The neighbor even shared her love story, which Sierra had previously told Soledad. But unlike her aunt, Soledad was more curious and asked a lot more questions. Did you see him afterwards? Yes, regularly. He would come to see me whenever he had the opportunity. But why didn't you get married? He was married. And you could have lived with another man while occasionally seeing Pedro. Mercedes, the old lady, looked at Soledad in a strange way, pondered for a moment, and replied, I couldn't do that. I only loved him. He was the first and only man in my life. And you didn't have any other close relationships? Soledad was surprised. She had already had close relationships with guys, but she had never truly fallen in love. And the idea of remaining faithful to one person like that was something Soledad couldn't comprehend yet. No. And when he was in prison? No. Wow. Can it really be like that? Of course, it can. When you love someone with all your heart, you simply can't imagine anyone else by your side. You just haven't experienced that kind of love yet, so it seems unreal to you. He was the best. So many different men tried to win my favor, but no one, not even half of them, was like him. When I saw him for the first time, I fell in love with him instantly. Once and forever. I looked at him and knew, it's either him or no one at all. I feel like I'll never meet a man like that. Who knows? 
I believe that everyone has their own soulmate. You can feel it with your whole heart. It's just not everyone's luck to meet them. But you will definitely meet yours. I have no doubt about it. Oh, I wish. It must be so wonderful to meet your special someone. Soledad paused for a moment and suddenly asked, If you loved each other so much, did you never fight? We fought, and very passionately. I was terribly jealous. I understood that he was sleeping with his wife. And it hurts so much to share the one you love with someone else. But when you love, your fights are as intense as your love. But then it's always so nice to make up. Mercedes smiled, clearly reminiscing about her past. Soledad looked at her neighbor and smiled too. She even envied her a little. Not everyone is granted the experience of such strong emotions in life. Perhaps this old lady could be called a happy person since she was lucky enough to experience it all. As if reading Soledad's thoughts, Mercedes said, I could be called a happy person if I had someone to live for right now. But as it is, I simply live and wait for my time. There is no joy in life, you know, and it's very oppressive. Soledad felt sorry for her to tears, and she decided to spend more time with the interesting old lady. It was truly fascinating to be around her. She was educated, versatile, and very curious for her age. Soledad suddenly thought that it wouldn't be a bad idea to buy a laptop for such an inquisitive granny. Maybe you should buy yourself a laptop? I can teach you how to use it. There are so many possibilities and hobbies. What would I do with it? You can play games, participate in forums or social media groups based on your interests. Meet different people, find like-minded individuals. Yes, there are plenty of things you can do. Interested? I'm not sure, really. Well, there is one problem, though, Soledad hesitated. What is it? It's not a cheap pleasure. How much is it? Soledad mentioned the average price. That's not a problem, I have the money. Soledad was very surprised. Judging by the condition of Mercedes' apartment, she couldn't be considered well off. Everything was clean and neat, but the repairs were very old. The furniture was clearly over 10 years old, but the old lady had some valuable possessions, even some homemade ones. Soledad hadn't paid attention to it before, but now she noticed. All right then. When should we make the purchase? What do we need for that? Some time to place the order and, of course, the money. Do you have time now? Mercedes asked. It was evident that the old lady was interested in this idea. Understandably, for someone who lacked real-life social interactions, the internet was the only way out of the situation. Yes, I have time. Then let's go ahead and make the purchase. Okay. I'll just quickly grab my laptop. They quickly selected a laptop, which turned out to be of a higher price range. But the neighbor said it wasn't a problem, they would go ahead and place the order. The purchase was supposed to be delivered the next day. Mercedes was very worried about it. Can you stay with me tomorrow? I'm afraid of all these deliveries and stuff. Besides, it needs to be checked for functionality. I don't understand any of that yet. Can you help me again? Of course, with pleasure. Thanks to Soledad, Mercedes now had a laptop. Initially, Soledad had to explain and demonstrate everything, but the neighbor turned out to be a quick learner, and within a week, she was managing her own needs. The time came for Sierra to go to the healer Acela, and this time she went alone. She had indeed been feeling much better, and it was evident. Moreover, her niece had a lot of work piled up and couldn't take time off. From the early morning, Soledad's day didn't go well. First, she was scolded by her boss, then a colleague spilled coffee on her and ruined her blouse. Then Soledad messed up a report and received another reprimand from management. There was less than an hour left until the end of the workday, and Soledad silently prayed for this terrible day to be over. But the streak of misfortune continued, and Soledad was called into her boss's office again. Ah, when will I finally go home? This is some kind of mockery. 
Is it Friday the 13th today? Soledad complained to herself, slowly making her way to the boss's office. Diego Duran was strict and not very fair. If someone made even a minor mistake, he would take it out on that person the whole day. Today, apparently, it was Soledad's turn. Anticipating another reprimand, Soledad hesitantly knocked on the door of his office. Yes, shouted the office owner, knowing who and why had come to him. Soledad opened the door and silently entered the office. The boss immediately started yelling that he didn't need such incompetent employees, that he was tired of teaching everyone, and so on, in the same vein. She knew her boss's temperament well and knew that in such a situation, she just had to remain silent, obediently bowing her head. Because if she said even a word now, there was a high chance she would simply be fired, such cases had happened before. Soledad couldn't afford to be unemployed right now. After listening to all the complaints, she promised to be more attentive and redo everything tomorrow morning. The secretary, Lita, entered the office, and immediately the boss started yelling at her. Don't you see I have a visitor? What's so urgent? Sorry, but Eugenio Marquez has come to see you. And you warned me that as soon as he arrived, I should inform you right away, the secretary said in a guilty voice. Diego's expression instantly changed, and he spoke in a more friendly tone. Go to your workspace, Soledad. And be more careful in your work with financial documents in the future. They're not just papers. Addressing the secretary, he added, Lita, please invite Eugenio Marquez. Soledad, who had been working at this bank for three years, had never seen her boss like this before. And she had no idea who this mysterious Eugenio Marquez was. She knew all the bank's partners and supervisors, at least by name and surname. Soledad turned around and headed for the exit. And at that moment, he entered, a young man, not older than 40, in an elegant suit of an indiscernible dark color. His snow-white shirt shone with its whiteness. Almost black hair against that shirt seemed even darker, and his eyes, one could drown in them. Soledad felt like she was about to collapse right in the boss's office. A tremor of excitement ran through her entire body. She opened her mouth to greet him but couldn't utter a word. She was as if speechless. Good afternoon, the guest said, addressing either her or the office owner or both at once. His voice permanently imprinted in Soledad's mind as she stood there, motionless. Soledad, did you forget something? Diego Duran asked. Soledad shook her head negatively and slowly walked towards the exit. In the reception area, she immediately sat down on a chair. Soledad, are you okay? Did he fire you? Lita asked, sounding worried. Lita, who was that just now? Where? Oh, you mean Eugenio? Lita smiled dreamily. Admit it, he's handsome. Okay, but who is he? Soledad ignored all the questions. I saw him and heard his name for the first time. He is the new shareholder of our bank. Or rather, the new owner, to be more precise. I understand that he bought a stake from several people in our bank, and now he holds a controlling package of shares, and serious management changes await us. I see. Have you heard about him before? You're familiar with these circles, like a fish in water. Lita smiled. I don't know anything about him, really. I only know that he lived in another country for some time, but now he has returned to his homeland and plans to develop his business here. Admirable ambition, Soledad smiled. So, did he fire you? Not yet, but it's unclear what will happen next. Soledad tried to stall as much as possible to wait for Eugenio to leave, but she couldn't stay in the reception area for too long. If Diego Duran himself came out, and he certainly would come out to escort such a valuable guest, she would definitely be fired tomorrow. So Soledad thanked Lita for her support and went to her office. She couldn't work anymore, Eugenio Marquez's face was in front of her eyes. She suddenly remembered her old neighbor who had told her about her first encounter with Pedro. Based on her description, it seemed that Soledad had also fallen in love. What am I supposed to do with this love? He's so out of reach. 
Why couldn't I fall in love with some courier or taxi driver, huh? Soledad complained. Impatiently waiting for the end of the workday to share her emotions with her aunt and Mercedes, Soledad grabbed her bag and practically flew into the corridor. She flew because she stumbled on the edge of the doormat near the office door. And she sprawled right in front of someone's feet, narrowly avoiding knocking over a passerby. But when she lifted her head and saw who she had fallen in front of, her only wish was to become invisible. Eugenio Marquez was looking down at her. He leaned down and helped her up. Do you always leave your workplace like this, or am I just lucky? He smiled, and Soledad melted completely. What a voice. What a smile. It's unbelievable. Soledad thought, holding onto his hand and seemingly unwilling to let it go. Excuse me, can you stand? Eugenio asked. Yes, of course. Are you sure everything is okay with you? Do you need any help? I'm fine, thank you. Well, then, maybe you can let go of my hand. Oh. Soledad blushed. I'm sorry. It's okay. You just squeezed my hand so tightly that I thought maybe you weren't feeling well and were afraid of falling again. If Soledad had been more cunning, she would have taken advantage of the situation and pretended to be injured. But Soledad was too well-mannered and couldn't lie at all, which she regretted on several occasions. I was just scared. It's the first time something like this has happened to me, she replied. Yes, I can see that you're not a professional acrobat, Eugenio Marquez smiled. He has a great sense of humor too. Soledad admired, considering that quality to be one of the most important in a person. She smiled back and said, Yes, definitely not an acrobat. Sorry again, it was awkward. It's all right. Have a good evening, the charming Eugenio bid farewell and continued down the corridor. And you too, Soledad said as she watched him leave. For some reason, she returned to her office and began pacing around it. Soledad always did that when she was extremely nervous. She took out her phone and dialed. Aunt Sierra, are you home? Yes, of course. What happened? Why do you sound like that? Gather the council urgently. I need your help. Her puzzled aunt sought clarification. Soledad, sorry, what council? Are you sick? No, invite our neighbor Mercedes to our house. I need advice from both of you. I can't handle it alone. And I don't want to retell the same story twice. Now I understand. When will you come? In half an hour. We'll be waiting. Soledad walked home on foot. Usually, she would take the bus for a few stops, but now it was crucial for her to gather her thoughts and breathe some fresh air. On the way, she stopped by her favorite pastry shop and bought cream puffs. She didn't have time or desire to cook herself. Entering her apartment, Soledad called out from the doorway. Is everyone here? Yes, both women answered in unison, intrigued by Soledad and curious about her story. They couldn't understand what had happened that required Soledad's urgent help. Soledad, darling, were you being chased? You look troubled. Observed the elderly Mercedes. No, no one was chasing me, but something terrible happened. Soledad further heightened the mystery, causing both women to become even more alarmed. Can you just tell us what happened? Aunt Sierra couldn't stand the suspense and vagueness. She disliked intrigue and unfinished stories. I fell in love. Soledad proudly declared. What a fool. Why scare us like that? I thought something unpleasant had happened at your work. Aunt Sierra exclaimed in frustration. Aunt, something unpleasant did happen, something extremely unpleasant because I fell in love with someone I shouldn't have. Oh my, darling, is he your boss? Is he married? Is he ugly? Why can't you fall in love with him? The neighbor bombarded her with questions. He's not my boss. He's worse. He's the new owner of the bank I work at. I don't know if he's married or not. Most likely, yes, because such a handsome man simply can't be single. 
Well, what's wrong with that? Are you worried because you don't know his marital status? Mercedes asked another question. No, it's that I fell in love with someone I can never be with, a priori. Soledad almost cried. Why can't you be with him? The old lady didn't understand. Because girls like me don't interest him. He's rich, handsome, interesting, intelligent, educated, and has a great sense of humor. And me? Oh God, why? Why him? Couldn't I have fallen in love with some locksmith or security guard? Her nerves finally gave way, and Soledad collapsed into her hands and burst into tears. It was painful to watch her. The women exchanged glances but said nothing. Aunt Sierra understood that Soledad was right and that she hardly stood a chance. Mercedes was lost in her own thoughts and remained silent. Aunt Sierra was the first to break the silence. Soledad, I think nothing terrible has happened. Soon, you'll forget about him. Maybe you should go somewhere or meet someone. There are plenty of dating websites online. I'm sure you'll easily find a worthy guy. I don't want a worthy or unworthy guy. I want him. Soledad insisted. I understand, but it's not love, it's just. Sierra, hold off on the conclusions, the neighbor interrupted. We can't know how serious this is. Besides, why do you assume that Soledad has no chance with this banker? Even Soledad stopped crying, looking at Mercedes in surprise, doubting her sanity at that moment. Do you really think I have even the tiniest chance? She clarified with Mercedes. Of course, Mercedes said with complete seriousness and confidence. I thought you were a realist, not a dreamer, Soledad smiled. Most importantly, don't rush to conclusions and decisions, the neighbor advised. I'm going to bed, ladies, I feel like sleeping. She got up, wished him good night, and went to her own apartment. I think you offended her, Aunt Sierra said. Why did you do that? She just wanted to support you. Yeah, how did she support me? By making me believe in fairy tales? I've outgrown that stage. Well, I don't know. She supported you as best she could. By the way, why aren't you asking how my visit to the healer Acela went? Sorry, I forgot. I had such a difficult day today. How was your trip? It went great. Now I'll visit her again in two months. The treatment is showing results. I even gained three kilograms. Can you imagine? Aunt, I'm so happy for you, really. Sorry, I'm going to my room to lie down, okay? What about the cream puffs? I don't want them. I have no appetite. Oh my God. You barely eat anything as it is. Aunt Sierra exclaimed, but she didn't argue that she knew it would be pointless. In the morning, Soledad went to work with no enthusiasm at all. It was understandable. But now, what to do? Aunt Sierra couldn't find peace all morning, thinking about how to distract her niece from this hopeless infatuation. She herself had fallen in love several times and remembered well that in such a state, the brain doesn't function and no arguments are perceived. Sierra had lunch, took two cream puffs, and went down to her neighbor's apartment. She rang the doorbell, but no one answered. Maybe she's really upset with Soledad and doesn't want to talk to me. It's a shame, someone good got offended for no reason, Sierra felt disappointed and returned home. Soledad's workday was calm and uneventful. She focused and finished her report. She couldn't muster any more work motivation. Throughout the day, she thought about Eugenio, his face and smile were constantly in her mind, making it difficult to concentrate. It's good that tomorrow and the day after our days off. Maybe I'll distract myself a little and calm down, Soledad reassured herself. The phone rang and Soledad looked at the display, Mercedes. It was very unexpected. Feeling guilty about the neighbor, Soledad grabbed the receiver. Yes, what happened? Nothing, my dear, I just wanted to ask you to stop by my place for a few minutes after work. Of course, I'll come by. Soledad gathered her courage and asked. You're not mad at me from yesterday, are you? 
I'm sorry, I was just on edge, and I didn't mean to offend you, I promise. It's alright, I wasn't offended at all. I left because I needed to think. Oh, thank goodness. I was really worried that I offended you for no reason at all. Sweetie, it's hard to offend me. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I'll be waiting for you in the evening. Have a good day. Thank you. See you in the evening. In the evening, Soledad went shopping, brought the grocery bags home, changed her clothes, and only then went to the old lady's apartment. She didn't think it was an important visit, so she didn't rush. Mercedes opened the door almost immediately after Soledad rang the bell. It felt like she had been waiting for her by the door. Sorry, I was a little late. I had to buy groceries. No problem, I didn't say it was urgent. They walked into the living room and sat at the table, where cups, a coffee pot, and a box of chocolates were already placed. Soledad was surprised. She had never seen chocolates at Mercedes' place before, or at least not like this. I decided to treat myself to something sweet, she gestured towards the box. Those are my favorites. You're right, it's important to pamper yourself, it lifts your mood, Soledad agreed. The old lady smiled, moved the cups, poured coffee into them, and handed one to Soledad. Soledad remained silent and waited. She didn't understand what important conversation they needed to have, but she didn't rush to ask. It seemed impolite to her, although she was very curious. Soledad, I have a very important and serious conversation to have with you. I don't even know where to start. She got up and took a folder from the sideboard, opened it, looked at something, and closed it again. Then she looked at Soledad questioningly, as if doubting something. But then she opened the folder again and took out several sheets from it. The sheets were not ordinary, they had holograms and other official marks, indicating their importance. Soledad remained silent and looked at her neighbor, now completely clueless. Maybe she needs me to reissue some documents, and she made a power of attorney in my name, Soledad guessed. But her assumption was mistaken, or rather, not entirely accurate. Soledad, do you remember when I told you about Pedro? Soledad looked at the old lady in surprise. Of course, she remembered. It was just recently. Of course, I remember, Soledad smiled. Stories like that are remembered even after 10 years, and you told me recently. But what happened? You see, dear, Pedro was a complicated person. She fell silent, clearly weighing every word of her story to avoid saying too much. And he wasn't in prison for no reason. I won't go into the details, it's not important now. What's important is something else, he left something for me. Something that only I know about. After all, he loved me too and was very upset about marrying someone else. But at the same time, he always provided for me and supported me financially. Soledad didn't quite understand why the old lady was telling her all this. If she wanted to vent, she could have just said it outright, what was the point of these intrigues? But she listened silently without interrupting. If Mercedes wanted to narrate the story this way, then Soledad would listen. I never lived in luxury. I saved and set aside what I could. No, I never deprived myself of anything, but I also didn't indulge in unnecessary things. But after Pedro's death, it turned out that he left me an inheritance, a completely legal one. You see, after his time in prison, he started his own business and was quite successful. I knew he had his own business, but I wasn't interested in how profitable it was. I never asked him questions about money because I never lacked them. I thought that since he was helping me financially, his family was also well off. And that meant everything was fine with him. I was able to accumulate a decent sum. Soledad was stunned by this revelation. Here, living next to her was a modest old lady neighbor who had accumulated so much wealth. Mercedes, why are you telling me all this? I don't understand, Soledad sincerely exclaimed. Just wait, you'll understand soon, the neighbor smiled. You see, this money will last me a lifetime. But what I inherited from my beloved is of no use to me. I want to give it to someone who needs it more as you, Soledad. 
Me? Soledad nearly fell off her chair in surprise. I'm sorry, but I can't accept it. Firstly, it's not up for discussion. Secondly, you don't even know what you're refusing. And thirdly, I don't want to give it to you just out of goodwill. It became more interesting. The old lady wanted to give something to Soledad in exchange for a service. But what? What service could a simple bank employee provide to this extraordinary old lady? Mercedes, I don't understand. What service can I provide you? And I don't care about someone else's inheritance. I won't take it, Soledad said. Well, I want to make a deal with you, the neighbor interrupted her. You will look after me, and after my death, this apartment will be yours. Along with everything in it and what I have in my bank account. I have two valuable paintings, but nobody knows about them, of course. Looking at me, you'd never think I'm a secret millionaire, the old lady smiled. So, will you agree to take care of me? Yes, of course, but I don't need anything. I can help you as a neighbor, Soledad insisted. Soledad, don't be foolish. If I don't leave the apartment to you, it will go to the state, and I don't want that. I grew up in an orphanage, and I bought this apartment myself. I earned it, with some help from Pedro, of course. But that's not important now. I don't want it to go to a stranger, understand? I understand. Soledad still looked surprised at her neighbor, who was already handing her the contract. Then sign it, but read it first. I don't like it when people sign without reading. It lists all the property, and all that's left is your signature and notarization. But I can do that without you. Soledad carefully read the terms of the contract. Nothing unusual, cleaning once a week, grocery shopping, cooking, and laundry. In principle, she already did most of these things. After the death of Mercedes Colombo, Soledad would receive the two-bedroom apartment and all the belongings owned by Colombo at the time of her death. So, you're signing it? The old lady smiled. I'm signing, Soledad sighed. She understood her neighbor. Since she had no close relatives, it was better to leave her possessions to someone who wanted them. Especially since Soledad had genuinely taken care of her without any payment. There, I've signed everywhere it was needed. You're a clever girl, my dear. Now, let's talk about something important and interesting. Tell me, do you still want to get closer to Eugenio Marquez? Soledad was shocked by the sudden shift from one topic to another. Of course, nothing has changed. I still think it's impossible, she replied. And what do you know about him? Mercedes asked, smiling mysteriously. Well, practically nothing. Just his name, surname, and that he's the new owner of the bank. Well, well, said the grandmother, sighing. It's not much, of course. All right, I'll tell you. Eugenio Marquez, born in 1988. He's only 34 years old, so he's quite something. He was born in the north of the country. His father was in the military, and his mother was a well-known art expert. In the late 90s, his father passed away, and his mother was invited to work abroad. Eugenio went with his mother, and there he finished school, then university with honors, becoming an excellent financier. During this time, Eugenio's mother married an outrageously wealthy Frenchman who left her a luxurious inheritance. And in turn, she handed it over to her son for business development. Eugenio, who had always dreamed of returning to his homeland, invested the money in a business in another country. He invested very successfully and, having earned enough money, returned to his hometown. Besides owning shares in your bank, he also owned several other enterprises. And here's the most interesting part. Mercedes once again takes out some papers from a folder and hands them to Soledad. Soledad, who no longer understands or comprehends anything, being in a state of shock from her neighbor, silently takes them in her hands, but doesn't even read what's written there. Where do you know all this from? The girl asks, stunned. That's not important now. You better read what's written, Mercedes replies. Soledad reads, but still doesn't understand anything. Mercedes, I don't understand anything. I'm just in shock. 
How do you know so much information? Well, the internet, dear, it helps. Well, and some old connections, she says, mysteriously smiling again. You've really surprised me. I don't even know what to say. All right, I get it. You won't read it. Then I will. Here. She hands Soledad another document with government insignia. A deed in your name. You now own 30% of the shares in this company. Mercedes points her finger at the name, and Soledad's mouth drops open in astonishment. It was a very well-known company in their city. How can they belong to me? By way of donation, of course, the neighbor smiled. Once upon a time, this company was nothing special, but my clever Pedro acquired their shares, just in case. Now, as you know, it's a very reputable and highly profitable enterprise. It's these shares of the company that I inherited. After his death, I didn't do anything with them. I simply took them and opened a bank account. That's what they advised me to do at the company. I regularly receive dividends into this account, which is now yours too. I don't need that kind of money. She handed Soledad two more donation agreements, one for the bank account and one for the company's shares. Soledad had even stopped blinking. Her neighbor possessed immense wealth, but there was no sign of her being such an underground millionaire. Granny, I don't understand any of this. Why do I need all this wealth? I don't know what to do with such money. And it feels wrong. After all, it's your money. Soledad, why do I need that money? Am I going to take it with me to the afterlife? No, of course not. But you, my dear, you're a good girl. You have your whole life ahead of you, and you're smart enough to manage the money wisely. I don't know what to say, really. Just wait, there's more. From unofficial sources, I know that another 25% of the shares of the same company belong to Eugenio Marquez. And if you join forces, you'll have a controlling stake, you understand? I don't understand anything. Soledad was almost in tears. Why are you so upset? You should be happy. Can you imagine how your life will change now? No, I can't. We always lived with my aunt on a single salary. We're not used to living like this. It's a completely different life. Unfamiliar, foreign. At first, it may seem foreign to you, but you'll see, you'll like it. You'll be able to see the world, go on a proper vacation. Yes, you'll be able to do so much now. And suddenly, it struck Soledad like an electric shock. She remembered the words of Grandma Sella, who told her that her aunt needed to go to the sea and that Soledad's life would soon change dramatically and they would be able to go there. But Soledad couldn't have even imagined that something like this could happen. I can't imagine what will happen to Aunt Sierra when I tell her all this, Soledad thought. I still don't know what to say. I'm just in shock. What should I do now? The first thing you need to do is quit this job where the boss is a tyrant and boosts his ego at the expense of subordinates. And then you need to arrange a meeting with Marquez and show him the donation agreement for the shares. I think he will be very interested in your proposal for collaboration. Just be careful, under no circumstances agree to sell him the shares. After all, it's your secure future. Understood, all right. And, yes, the most important thing is that he's not married, Mercedes smiled. How did you find that out? That's actually not the most difficult thing, it's available on the internet. They write about him as a promising and wealthy bachelor. So, come on, Soledad, go for it. Yeah. Can you imagine all the ladies swarming around him? And here I am, Cinderella. Well, first of all, you're very smart and beautiful girls like that always have better chances. Secondly, don't you dare approach him in your current appearance. You have money now, so you need to update your wardrobe and change your hairstyle. Long hair is good, of course, but it should be nicely styled, not just tied up in a bun at the back of your head. Soledad shyly lowered her head. Mercedes was absolutely right. She couldn't go like this. Yes, I need to transform myself. That's right. Go and take care of it. How about having dinner together tonight? I'll quickly prepare something. Please don't refuse. 
I wasn't planning to. Why would I refuse pleasant company? All right, we'll expect you for dinner in an hour. Okay. Besides, I need to talk to Sierra. I have a little gift for her too. Soledad was about to leave, but then turned around, looked at Mercedes, and asked, Can I give you a hug? Of course, the neighbor smiled. Thank you so much. Don't mention it. You know, Pedro once suggested that I adopt a child. But I declined. I didn't want to raise someone else's child. And back then, he said to me, Well, maybe someday you'll meet a person you'll love with all your heart, and you'll want to make them happy. But the most important thing is that I have provided for you in such a way that you'll have that opportunity. And now, I love you with all my heart, and I really want your love story to have a happy ending, unlike mine. And you have that opportunity, dear, tears welled up in Mercedes' eyes. I understand, I will try my best. I'll go to my apartment, we'll be waiting for you in an hour. Soledad returned home, Aunt Sierra was watching TV. Upon hearing Soledad's arrival, she turned it off and came to greet her niece. Soledad, what took you so long? Seeing the expression on Soledad's face and the papers in her hands, Aunt Sierra became worried. Soledad, what happened? Are you okay? Let me give you a brief summary now, and you'll have the same expression on your face, Soledad began and told her aunt everything they had discussed with the neighbor. Then Soledad showed her aunt the donation documents. When Aunt Sierra saw how much money the old lady had in her account, she felt sick. Soledad, we can't accept this. It's a huge amount of money. Are you crazy? I reacted the same way, but the old lady said she didn't want it to go to the government. I understand, but maybe she has some relatives? Distant cousins or something, I don't know. What other kinds of relatives are there? No, she grew up in an orphanage. That's the whole problem. Nightmare, what do we do now? And then Soledad felt that everything was about to change in their lives. Aunt, can you imagine how much we can do now? You can finally go to the sea, even for a month. And do you remember what the healer Acela said back then? Well, there you have it. It came true. Can you believe it? Yeah, indeed, it's a major turn of events. All right, we need to hide these papers properly. I'll prepare something festive now. Soledad rushed to the kitchen and on her way, she shouted. I invited the old lady for dinner with us. By the way, she has a gift for you too. Another gift? Well, we'll have more than enough for a lifetime, Aunt Sierra sighed. Mercedes was a very punctual woman and arrived exactly after an hour. Soledad was finishing up the preparations. All the women were in the kitchen, having a pleasant conversation. Soledad flitted around like a swallow, going back and forth between the refrigerator and the table. The kitchen was small and not very convenient, and Soledad kept bumping into the table or the countertop. Listen, I have an idea, Soledad suddenly blurted out. What if we buy a house and all three of us move into it? What do you think? Soledad, what house are you talking about? Where would we get the money? Aunt Sierra began, but then remembered that they now had enough money. Soledad and Mercedes burst into laughter. I like your idea, the neighbor said, but don't rush into buying a house just yet. Why? Soledad was surprised. I have another idea, Mercedes replied. Your aunt, if I'm not mistaken, wanted to go to the seaside. She reached into her pocket, took out another valuable paper, and handed it to Sierra. This is from me to you. You really need to see air, not just two weeks a year, but preferably all the time. Please take it. It's not a paradise island, but it's still a very nice place. Sierra took the donation document and started reading, but she was so overwhelmed that she couldn't understand anything. Mercedes, what is this? Now you own a house in a small village by the sea. It's a two-flat house with 140 square meters. The surroundings are very beautiful. You'll definitely like it there. Pedro bought me this house as a birthday gift, and we often spent time there together. It's located a bit off the beaten path, so it's very peaceful and quiet. 
If you take me with you, I'll be very grateful. And Soledad can build her own life here. We won't disturb her. She can visit us as a guest to relax. Wait a minute, Soledad. Soledad, baby, we can handle it ourselves. Sierra is not even 50 yet. She's still a young girl by my standards. I'm just slightly over 70, so we're still in our prime. Don't worry about us. If things get really bad, we'll call you right away. Isn't that right, Sierra? That's right, Sierra said barely audibly, shocked. What an unusual day it is today. Well, you see, everything is fine, Soledad. They had dinner in silence. Soledad and Sierra were in complete shock. Their lives had changed so dramatically in just one day. Of course, the prediction had mentioned it, but they never expected the turn of events to be so drastic. On Monday morning, Soledad went to work and submitted her resignation letter. Diego Duran tried to talk her out of this impulsive step, but she was determined and insisted on it. In the end, he let her go. Now Soledad had time to focus on her physical transformation. She didn't rush to meet Eugenio. She needed to prepare for this significant event. Meanwhile, Aunt Sierra and Mercedes were getting ready to move and regularly debated what to take with them and what they could buy there. Aunt Sierra, not accustomed to unnecessary expenses, wanted to take her entire wardrobe with her, but Mercedes discouraged her. Sierra, it's easier to travel light. Soledad can send us everything we need by mail, she said, winking at Soledad, indicating that they didn't need all that clutter. I suggest we only pack valuable items, books, photographs, things you can't buy in a store. All right, Sierra agreed obediently. It was understandable for Aunt Sierra. Just a year ago, she had received a terrible diagnosis, and now there was a miraculous recovery and a new carefree life. How can one get used to such a change? Aunt Sierra asked Soledad to accompany her to see the healer Acela and thank her for everything. Aunt, we will definitely go. We need to buy groceries and plenty of candy, Soledad said. I'll take care of it myself. Tickets were bought for Friday, and today was already Wednesday, so they needed to visit the old lady Acela in time. They decided to go tomorrow morning. In the morning, Soledad called a taxi and went to the supermarket to buy groceries. After filling three bags with various delicacies, Soledad stopped by a branded pastry shop and bought five kilograms of assorted chocolate candies, ten chocolate bars, and a small chocolate cake. When her aunt saw all those bags, she was horrified. Soledad, this must have cost your entire salary. It doesn't matter, we have money, and it's needed to do good things. You know, I want to open a care home if the granny doesn't object. What kind of care home? For animals? No, for lonely elderly people. For those who have nowhere else to go. I think it will be the right thing to do. Wow, you're amazing. That's definitely the right thing. I support you, and I think Mercedes will too. They arrived at Acela's house, but the gate was closed. Soledad went to the neighbors to find out where she was. Her son took her with him. They left just yesterday. But the house is under our care. Did he take her permanently? Soledad clarified. I don't know, maybe, but he asked us to look after the house. I see, what a pity. Do you have grandchildren? Yes, three of them, the talkative neighbor replied. Just a moment, don't go anywhere. Soledad ran to the car, took out a bag of candies, and one bag of groceries. Here, take it, enjoy it for the health of Acela. She's a wonderful person. Oh, why? I can't accept this, these are expensive groceries. Don't argue, take it. It's from the bottom of my heart. Well, thank you, dear. God bless you. And I wish you good health too. Soledad replied and got back into the car. Well, where is she? Aunt Sierra asked. Her son took her home. I don't know where exactly. Sir, she turned to the taxi driver. Is there an orphanage or caring home nearby? There's a nursing home. Great, let's stop by there for a short while, Soledad ordered. 
they dropped off the remaining groceries to the lonely elderly residents and headed home. Tomorrow, Aunt Sierra and Mercedes were already leaving for that seaside town. Soledad found it very difficult to say goodbye, but she had no choice. Her aunt needed the seaside air, and Soledad had to focus on her own affairs and personal life. The three of them sat in the kitchen until three in the morning, unable to stop talking. The idea of a guest house for the elderly resonated well with Mercedes. I didn't leave you that money for nothing. Look at how kind and compassionate you are. Others would spend it on themselves and live for their own pleasure, but not you, the old lady rejoiced. The most important thing is for you to visit Eugenio without fail. Of course, I will go see him. During the day, they went to the train station. Soledad bid farewell to her two closest people, promising to visit as soon as she finished her urgent matters. They shed a few tears, embraced each other, and parted ways. The women boarded the train, and Soledad took a taxi back home. She was in a terrible mood and didn't feel like going home, so she remembered her friend Luisa. She dialed her number, but an unfamiliar man answered the call. Hello, excuse me, may I speak to Luisa? Hello, who is this? I'm Luisa's friend, we studied together. I know her friends, I am her husband. Luisa is currently in the maternity ward on bed rest. Oh, Luisa got married? Yes, a year ago. I guess you haven't been in touch for a long time. Apparently not. Well, please give her my warm regards from Soledad. Thank you, I will pass on the message. Soledad hung up the phone. Well, amidst all these problems, I didn't even know that Luisa got married. It feels a bit awkward. Although, why awkward? She didn't call me either during this time, she reassured herself. She walked along the alley towards the park near her house, feeling sad and melancholic. When she arrived home, there would be no one there, no one to cook for, no one to talk to. She didn't even have any friends. But what if she entertained herself today? So what if she was alone? She could watch an interesting TV series and have something delicious to eat. Pizza, of course. Soledad smiled at her idea and suddenly changed her route, turning the corner. There was an excellent pizzeria on the neighboring street where they made the most delicious pizza, almost like homemade. Ordering two pizzas, one with ham and mushrooms and one with four cheeses, Soledad also went to the store and bought two bottles of light beer. She rarely drank alcohol, but when she did, it was usually beer. Other beverages didn't evoke any emotions in her. Even on New Year's Eve, she poured beer into a champagne flute instead of champagne. Approaching her building, Soledad noticed an expensive car parked near her entrance. I wonder who these wealthy guests came to see. She wondered. Although she and her aunt didn't socialize much with the neighbors, they still knew some of them. Based on the neighbors' reactions, such guests couldn't be visiting them. Soledad circled around the car and approached the entrance. Soledad, wait a minute, she heard from behind and turned around, almost dropping the bag of beer, Eugenio Marquez was approaching her. Of all people, she certainly didn't expect to see him here. She immediately remembered what she was wearing and blushed, jeans, a t-shirt, and sneakers, terrible. But it seemed that Eugenio was not at all concerned about her appearance. Eugenio Marquez? What are you doing here? Hello, naturally, by car, Eugenio smiled. No, I mean, why are you here? Are you looking for someone? Of course, I'm looking for you, Eugenio confidently said. I don't understand, but why? Soledad blinked in confusion and looked at Marquez in surprise, while he simply smiled. You see, here's the thing, I went to the bank, and they told me that you resigned. You probably don't know, but I now have a larger stake in that bank, and I wouldn't want to lose valuable employees like you. So, I found out your address from the HR department and came here. Maybe you could invite me in for a cup of coffee? Soledad tried to understand something from what he said, but she struggled to grasp it. Oh my goodness, if he sees the beer in my bag, he'll think I'm some kind of alcoholic. What a disgrace. What should I do? 
and the house is a mess from the preparations. What should I do? Soledad, are you okay? Partially, Soledad honestly replied. Is something wrong? You seem a bit flustered. Of course, I'll be composed when such people come to visit. And she couldn't come up with anything better than agreeing to offer him coffee. Let's go then. I needed to meet with you anyway. Really? How interesting. Eugenio's eyes lit up. Can I help you with anything? He grabbed the bag, and at that moment, the bottles clinked together. He looked at Soledad in surprise. Wine? And for some unknown reason, and with what intention, Soledad decided to be honest. No, it's beer. I decided to have a solo beer party. One had to see Eugenio's expression, his eyes widened in astonishment. Seriously, beer in a bag? Well, yes. I felt like relaxing. Maybe you'll join me? Soledad was saying complete nonsense that she would never say in a normal state of mind. But now, some other version of Soledad was speaking in her place. Can I? The man clarified. Now it was Soledad's turn to be surprised. She said it just like that, without expecting him to agree. Yet, he did. Of course. Just afraid that we won't have enough beer for the both of us. It's a solvable problem. What's your apartment number? 54. Perfect. Wait a bit. Eugenio returned to his car, said something to the driver, and then, carrying the bag, he entered the building together with Soledad. As they rode the elevator up, it seemed to Soledad that the intensity of their energy was skyrocketing. Well, at least that's what she wanted to believe. Before entering the apartment, she apologized, warning him about the slight mess caused by her aunt packing up before leaving. Well, no worries, let's have our beer now and won't even notice anything else, Eugenio smiled. They went to the kitchen, took out the pizzas and beer, and sat at the table. Soledad placed the glasses, Eugenio poured the beer, and they simply gazed at each other. Soledad couldn't hold back any longer. Eugenio Marquez, let's just drink already, or else I'll lose consciousness from the tension. Are you nervous? Very much so, Soledad honestly admitted. And why are you nervous? I'll tell you, but a bit later. Honestly, it's better to drink first. All right. Then let's drink to the most unusual girl I've ever met in my life. Let's drink to you. Thank you. But what's so unusual about me? I've never seen a girl who loves beer and doesn't hide it, who doesn't try to pretend to be someone else and simply remains herself. That's a priceless quality in our time. Did you come to see me precisely because of that? No, I really wanted to see you. You see, when I first saw you in your boss's office, I wanted to get to know you, but I couldn't. And when you fell in front of me in the hallway, it wasn't the right time for a new acquaintance either. Then I went away for a couple of days, and when I came back, you had already resigned. Well, here I am, and I'm listening to you. Soledad, I don't know how to say this, he began to get flustered, and his cheeks slightly turned red. It was so sweet and touching that Soledad even smiled. And Eugenio noticed it, but interpreted it in his own way. Yes, yes. It probably looks funny and silly, but I constantly think about you. You've made an impression on me, and I wanted to talk to you once again. Just once? Soledad joked. I thought you were a serious person. I misspoke, at least once, you know? My father was in the military, and everything was clear and straightforward for him. My mom told me they met by chance, locked eyes, and got married two months later. He somehow instantly knew she was the one for him. Well, I feel like I have a similar story. Soledad felt like jumping up to the ceiling right now. Such a sweet and heartfelt confession is every girl's dream. She wanted to say that she felt the same, but at that moment, the doorbell rang and the moment passed. Soledad opened the door and there stood a young man with two bags in his hands. These are for Eugenio. Ah, uh, I see. Please bring the bags inside. 
Eugenio's driver brought the bags into the apartment and quietly left. Eugenio, in a masterly manner, started taking out beer, fish, squid, and other beer snacks from the bags. If we're having a beer party, then let's do it properly. He smiled. Maybe we should let the driver go so he doesn't have to wait outside the whole time? I feel bad for the guy. Eugenio looked at Soledad in surprise again. You think so? Of course, we have taxis available 24-7. Don't worry, worst case scenario, you can stay at my place overnight, there's enough space. I prefer the second option, Eugenio whispered almost inaudibly, but Soledad heard him. They set the table and started enjoying the beer snacks. The table was truly magnificent. Any beer lover would have appreciated it. The conversation flowed so easily that it felt as if they had known each other for a long time. Soledad really liked this man, and with each passing minute, she liked him more and more. Two months later, they got married and went on their honeymoon to India, a place Soledad had long dreamt of visiting. After India, they spent a week in a small seaside town with her aunt and grandmother, who had given Soledad such a valuable gift and forever changed her life. The couple combined their assets, and Eugenio became fully involved in developing that enterprise. Meanwhile, Soledad began the construction of the shelter for lonely people. Not just the elderly, because if you have the means and a compassionate heart, you have a duty to help those in need. That was Soledad's creed, and her husband fully supported her in it. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.